Okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, I think there's some technical issues. Sorry about that. Always happens. Is that better now? You guys, someone, can one of you comment and let us know if you can hear us? Fingers crossed. Um, Ali, Emma, is that working now? Awesome. Yeah. Woo. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that again. Okay, we will start again. I'm um, sure you enjoyed us uh, trying to see if uh, you can lip read what we were saying. Um, so, from the beginning, um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining in uh, this evening's ICS Planning Your Fundraising um, Hangout. Um, this is an opportunity for you guys to ask questions, um, to um, see, you know, what, what our thoughts are on how to plan your fundraising and just give, you know, you guys an opportunity to get involved. Um, so I'm Sarah. I'm an ICS fundraising support officer, and this is my colleague Perry, who is also a um, fundraising support officer. Um, and I work predominantly with BSO volunteers. Um, and I was also a volunteer myself with the International Service um, in Bolivia a couple of years ago. And I um, am going out as an ICS team leader um, with Prava later on this year. So as much as um, I'm a fundraising support officer, I'm also going through the same fundraising um, journey that you guys are too. Um, a couple of you said it's working, and then uh, Emma, is that a new? Uh, you said you can't hear. I don't know how. Okay, I think the majority is saying that they can hear us now. Okay, so we good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So yeah, do you want to you yeah, take the floor? Yeah. So, uh, yes, my name is Perry. Um. So I just started in the fundraising team. So this is my first hangout. Um, so I'm predominantly working with international service volunteers, um, but I'm also supporting the uh, Rally and Caregiver team as well for September. Um, so yeah, I also volunteered myself with YCare International um, back in 2014 and I was with Togo. Um, so yeah, I've um, been there as well for fundraising, um, so yeah, I completely understand where you're all at at the moment and how you're feeling, but yeah, we're all here to kind of um, introduce you to fundraising, kind of hopefully uh, start planning. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so um, just a quick point on, um, I think you've all seen it and know how to use it, but the um, bar on your, I think it would be on this side, um, is a question and answer bar. So basically, if a, you know, if you've got any um, questions that you want us to answer, then please put them on there. Um, and then I think some of you have seen how to use it, but if you if you see something you're like, I really want that question to get answered, um, just hit, hit the plus button and then we'll try and answer the ones that get the most pluses or, or the ones that people are really keen to get answered. Um, yeah, so this is about planning your fundraising. I imagine a lot of you um, are hoping to you know, go overseas in a few months. Um, so you, you're right at the beginning of your journey. Um, it is a really exciting time, I think, when you've just been selected. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just definitely like make the most of this opportunity. Um, we are gonna try and share our screen with you now and show you a video um, that uh, a colleague of ours in the fundraising team made about how to map your networks and a really good way to get started with your fundraising. Um, okay, so bear with me one second and we're going to try and share that. Goes a bit inception like for a second. But, okay. <laughs> Hi and welcome to this ICS fundraising tips video. My name's Isaac and I'm going to take you through an activity today which I find really useful when I'm planning my fundraising. It's designed to get you thinking about all those different people who might be able to help you with your fundraising efforts. It's called network mapping and it's really simple. So you start with a big piece of paper and I'm going to write my own name in the middle of that piece of paper. Once I've done that, I'm going to think of somebody else that I know and pop their name somewhere else on the piece of paper. I'll connect those two names together and then I'll have a think about the ways that they might be able to help me with my fundraising. Would they come along to an event that I've organised? Would they help me to organise an event? 
Do they have any special skills or talents that they could donate? For example, they might be an artist or a performer. Maybe they work somewhere useful. So if they work in a supermarket, for example, they might help you to organize a charity backpack. So I've chosen my friend Anne, and Anne works in a pub. So I'm going to talk to Anne about whether it's possible for us to run a pub quiz at her pub. But I also think that Anne would probably support me by donating towards my sponsor's activities. So I'm going to pop both of those things down as well. So you can carry on doing this with loads of different people. Do it with as many people as you can think of. Or you can start doing it with groups of people or organisations that you've been involved with in the past. So for example, I'm going to think about my old school. And also my family. I'm also going to have a think about my office, my workplace, whatever that workplace might be. I'm going to think a bit further back as well and think about any youth groups that I might have been part of when I was younger. Once you've spent about 15 or 20 minutes doing this, you should have filled up your page with loads of possible fundraising links for you to make use of. If you need any help with the network mapping itself or with coming up with new ideas, then do get in touch with your fundraising support officer. And we also have a great A to Z of fundraising ideas video for you to check out if you're a bit unsure about what kind of activities you could use with these networks. Good luck with all of your fundraising. Don't forget to get in touch if you need anything. And I'm going to crack on and finish off my networking map. And we're back. I hope you all managed to view um, that amazing network mapping video okay. And um, that, as I mentioned before, is our, our lovely colleague Isaac, who might be one of your fundraising support officers. Um, so yeah, hope you hope you all enjoyed that video. Um, as we said before the video started, please do remember to make the most of the question and answer function. And um, that's why we're here. And um, this is like a live um, Q and A chat for you guys to see that video. And if you have any questions or you've got any thoughts, um, then definitely share them with us. Um, so yeah, it uses us as an opportunity to um, voice all your queries, concerns. Um, I think the, the first thing that I would say is that um, don't worry if you are sat there and you're feeling quite nervous about the fundraising. Um, it's really, really normal. Um, I can guarantee you that um, almost every volunteer that I speak to um, in that initial phone call that we have it is saying they're feeling quite daunted. Um, and often the thing that comes up uh, that people say to me is that they don't know um, how to break down this target. So they, they're like, oh, I just don't know how I'm ever going to fundraise £800 or, or £1,500. Um, it just seems impossible. And I think everyone has has that fear. Did, did yeah. you feel like that when you started fundraising? Yeah, yeah, no. I think initially it seems like a, a lot. Um, but I guess that's why partly like the network mapping is such a great tool. It does mean that you can like start to break it like break that target down into like more manageable pieces like using some different networks that you you've got um and then yeah kind of putting it into like a timeline as well just makes it a little bit more manageable i think yeah definitely um so i would say don't view it as i need to fundraise 800 pounds because that's when i first started fundraising i used to think of just see it as a target but if you can break down that target um as isaac shows in the video by 
mapping out your networks and then by um, breaking it down into say maybe four to five different activities if you plan on each activity raising 100 pounds or 200 pounds then that will like build up and you get so engrossed in like actually like doing it and like yeah. Um, fulfilling the plan that you've, you've mapped out, it really does make it seem so much easier. Um, I definitely made my own plan recently mm -hmm. um, spent a bit of time, you know, using those same tools, like thinking about, like, who did I know um, who might be able to contribute? Because I think it can be quite easy to think, um, you know, oh, yeah, I, I think, you know, maybe my, my friends, my family might donate a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's never going to add up to that full target. So you really do need to think about how those people can help you in other ways. Um, so it's not just about like seeing who can make a donation to your page, but it's, it's also about seeing like, like as explained, oh, so I've got my mum, she can donate, but she can also, um, I can do like a big sale in her office. Exactly. Um, my friend yeah. works in a pub. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we've got a question um, from Erin. Um, so how do you, without, become, without becoming annoying, ask people to donate? Obviously, I have fundraising activities um, plans, but I'm not sure how to keep people engaged if I keep asking for their support. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, definitely a good question. Um, so I guess, firstly, um, think about that you aren't necessarily going to be asking the same people to donate to each different activity. That's partly why like the network mapping is a good tool. Um, so people that are going to be kind of sponsoring you for like a challenge aren't necessarily going to be the same people who are going to be coming along to your like pub quiz or coming along or you know you're going to go talk to at your like youth club. So thinking about different groups of people you can ask to donate as well. So you're not kind of asking the same group for each activity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is really like, you know, you know, like using that video and trying to think about like all the different groups that you might never have thought of before. When I first started, you know, we really do have to like sit down and have a, a really good think about it. I had never considered, for instance, my brother's rugby club, that that could be a good place to fundraise. But actually um, ending up, you know, just doing like selling bacon butties and like cups of tea and coffee on the mm -hmm. sidelines, like really added up. So Definitely. yeah, things like that. Yeah. Um, I guess on the same note as well, like if you're kind of sharing things on like social media, like sharing your just giving page, thinking about like each time you share it, thinking about like different ways of engaging like mm -hmm. that group of people. So at, at first you might just put up a simple post explaining kind of what you're fundraising for. Um, second time around you might want to make like a video and um, kind of um, yeah explaining more about your placement, more what you're going to be doing. So engaging people like differently that way. Mm -hmm. um, and if people have said that they're going to donate but haven't you know got around to it yet like don't feel afraid to kind of just chase them up about mm -hmm. it and saying you know nicely like um seeing if you know they're still able to donate to your page as well yeah I mean I think that's really key um and I think fundraising is often something that people haven't done before and it can really push you out of your comfort zone um, and I think in a way that is really good preparation for your ICS placement because you are definitely you know that you're going to be in a new culture and it's um, a completely different situation so this is a really good way of, of getting you to you know um, you know, build a new confidence yeah. and put yourself out there. So don't don't be worried. Like the the worst that anyone can ever say is no. Like and even you know if they do say no, that's fine because you've got other plans and you're going to stay positive and move on to the next thing. Um, but I would say in terms of without being annoying, asking people to say no. So I found um, when I was on meeting recently, a lot of people were like, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely donate, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I'll get around to it. And I knew that they wanted to donate and they had really good intentions, but they just weren't, you know, um, actually getting on, going on by just giving people and donating. Um, so I decided that the best way to do that would be give them a deadline. Um, mm -hmm. But I decided to organise a raffle and then say that anyone who donated um, to my Just Giving page would automatically get entered into the raffle. But the prize draw was going to be on a certain date, like well before my fundraising deadline. And so then it meant also that I could message people and be like, you said you wanted to donate. I'd hate for you to miss the raffle <laughs> deadline. Um, definitely make sure you're doing it before this day. Um, and I, I got some raffle prizes by going around local businesses down my high street with um, a letter of authority that you should have been sent by your fundraising support officer. If you can't find it, just message them. They'll send it to you, which just says you are authorised to fundraise um, for your charity. 
and um, I also found that um, where I live in in London is a lot of like um, big companies and a lot of them are saying like approach the head office um, although I did get a few like small things um, given to me on day I then emailed a lot of companies and got some raffle prizes um, vouchers through that I used as raffle prizes so things like restaurant vouchers and hair, haircut voucher um, and yeah that definitely I saw like a, a massive like boost in donations especially on like the day of the the raffle prize draw yeah, definitely giving people like incentives to donate yeah yeah yeah, exactly. top tip, I would say. yeah so you're giving them something back in return is something we always recommend yeah, like exactly. but it, it could be something yeah. small i did a similar thing so i um when i was offering like basically when i was trying to fundraise for icf um so i kind of offered like a postcard service so if someone donated to um, my just giving page or um, donated like at work, um, I said to like give me um, give me um, their address, um, and I would send them a postcard from my placement. Um, so everyone that donated to my page, I then when I was in Togo on placement, sent them like a, a nice postcard, um, and that seemed to really work as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. It makes us feel a little bit you know connected to. Um, to, to the yeah, to the yeah. placement and and to why you're fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and we've got uh, another couple of questions, um, which is great. One of them has had three. So should we? Should we yeah, should we put on that? Okay. Cool. So um, Bryony has said, um, my MSC dissertation is due on the eighth of August, which is just before the training day, and I also work, so I'm struggling to find the time to put towards doing events to help me fundraise the money. Do you have any tips? Okay. Um, so I think my top tip really would be to be realistic. Um, so, you know, I completely appreciate um, every volunteer is going to have other time constraints and you've got your own lives going on, you know, that, you know, that's really evident to us. And it's, it's really obviously important that you're, you know, putting lots of time towards those things. Um, but, you know, ICS is also something that you've committed to um, and that you know is, is equally important so we do obviously you're going to have to set aside time um, to do fundraising before your placement and um, fundraising is a, a compulsory um, and a really like beneficial part of your ICS placement um, but that said there are lots of things that you can do that are quite like um, there are things that you can fit around your daily life. Um, so, like one of my favourite things to do um, as quite a last minute one that you can do from your bedroom is just selling things online. Yeah. So having a clear out, or like even if you don't have anything, asking um, friends and family if they've got anything that they can like contribute um, and just put it on eBay. There's also other good websites where like Vinted and Spark and lots of ones that I probably have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or Carbeat sales such a classic there's a good website called carbyjunction.com and you can like type in your postcode find one's local to you yeah um those are, are really good ways of giving yourself like that last minute boost definitely um yeah i think also um like i guess if you're a little bit nearer to going overseas like um maybe having like a um a virtual like night out which is basically where you um, instead of um, kind of going for like leaving drinks before your placement, you would ask people to um, donate a drink to your just giving page, and again you can set that up kind of straight away from you know from your bedroom from wherever you are. Um, so that's like quite quite a good one as well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess other things like doing odd jobs as well for people. So even if you know you are at uni, um, you're kind of um, living in a uni house. Um, I know like when I was at uni no one wanted to do the washing up for example like maybe um, you know getting your housemates to um, donate to you if you kind of do the do the dishes for like a week or something and you know that's again something you can do around like other commitments yeah um, and I think a key, like if you are saying you know you're really busy at the moment because of, of uh, work commitments or you're setting up for example mm -hmm. um, there are things that you can do now um, and you know you're planning things that you can do when you will have a bit more free time yeah. um so things like applying to supermarkets about doing backpacking or like bucket collections um or like um you might find that if you've got a bit more time for your placement it might be worth looking at if there are any grants available in your area that you could send up applications yeah. for these things don't take that much time but if you find if you've you know don't the, the key is to not 
you know, don't put it off. Like, make sure that your fundraising is a priority and you're showing us that you are committed to your placement by doing it. Yeah. But that said, you can plan things now um, which will guarantee that you'll hit your target. Um, but, you know, you might be doing more of, like, the events and stuff later on, but you're so asking you about for permission yeah. for a couple of now. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, but once you've kind of got venue, if you if it is, like, an event and you need, like, um, to secure the venue, once you've done that, like, early on, then it gives you loads of time to, like, promote it as well and make sure that, you know, you've got enough interest and enough people mm -hmm. coming um, yeah. as well. And I would definitely say, like, if you if you know you've got lots of commit other commitments, like that's partly why we say like stay in touch with us. It's mm -hmm. really important to like let us know that you know you've got you've got lots of things going on, but you are doing X, Y, and Z to uh, wrap out your fundraising. Um, because you know, yeah, we just don't know if, if you don't tell us, then we we would be chasing you up to say why haven't you done anything? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just do stay in touch as well. I would yeah. Say. So I think in terms of um, so top tips for mm -hmm. if you are struggling to find time yeah. for raising, I would say um, uh, plan ahead. Plan ahead, yeah. absolutely. Um, keep in touch with us, like mm -hmm. Harry said. Um, in all in all aspects of your fundraising, even if like whatever situation you're at, please get in touch with your fundraising support officer um, because they'll be able to help support you if you need any support, or at least they'll be reassured that you're you're doing great and they won't have to keep chasing you um, mm. <laughs> to see how it's going. Um, but yeah, but don't worry, like you absolutely can do it. I know that um, often you know you have a lot of stuff going on, um, but it will be so so worthwhile. Yeah. So yeah, definitely make time for your fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we watch um the next video? Yeah. Um, which is um yeah, about how to, to plan your fundraising <laughs> essentially. <laughs> it's about how to um break down your fundraising into different types of ideas. Um so I'm gonna play that now. Um and then there are a couple more questions yeah. which we will we will come back to. Um just gonna share my screen with you all. Welcome guys to the second video in our guide to ITS fundraising. I'm Sarah and I'm Jess and we're here to help you break down a recipe for fundraising success. We know that when you get your fundraising target you might not know where to get started. That's why we suggest that you break it down into smaller chunks. For volunteers with an £800 target we recommend planning four to five different fundraising activities and our recipe goes as follows. You want to start with your main ingredients, this is your flagship idea. It needs to be fun, creative and have the wow factor. You're looking to raise between 200 and 300 pounds with this event. Here are some suggestions. School fundraising. If you can get your old school to do a non-uniform day for you by offering to do an assembly or take a lesson when you get back from your placement, you're looking at a huge injection of cash. Quiz night. Great fun and a good way to get other people engaged with your fundraising. If you do other activities on the side, such as a raffle, you're looking at raising between 150 and 300 pounds from each quiz night. Community funding. If you've got links to a community organisation, running a fund day can be a great way to get other people involved and can raise lots of cash. Next, you want to add one sponsored activity. What would be a challenge for you? Or maybe you can use Dare to Donate. It's best not to have a cost associated, so here are some suggestions. The £5 food challenge. Spend five days with only £1 a day for all of your food and drink. Not only does this raise loads of sponsorship, but it also raises awareness of people who live under one pound a day in developing countries. Keep your Facebook up to date or even set up a blog. Give it up. Do a digital detox, ditch the booze or give up chocolate. Do something that you find challenging and people are much more likely to donate. A sports challenge. Try a run, a swim or a bike ride or try all three. A physical challenge is a really popular and successful way of getting people to sponsor you. You'll want to add a dash and a pinch of smaller activities as well, such as cake sales. These are a popular fundraiser for a reason. Who does not love cake? Run at least two of these to raise at least 50 to 100 pounds. Car boot sales. Collect up unwanted stuff from friends and family and do a clear out of your room. You're not going to be there for three months anyway. Head down to your local car boot, 100 pounds a pop. Swap shop. With clothes, books and DVDs. Get people to bring their stuff on a certain date and pay to take part in the swap. One person's junk is another person's treasure. It's worth adding a backup activity just in case things don't work out. Try to think of this as your takeaway menu on standby. And here are a few suggestions. But remember, they're never guaranteed, so don't rely on them. 
applying for grants, have a look at what local trusts or foundations are available, or see if your local school or uni has a volunteering grant that you can apply for. Remember to get your application in early so that you've got a much better chance of being successful. Community groups. Local community groups might be interested in hearing about ICS and what you're going to do, and they may even give you a donation towards your fundraising. Get in touch with your local groups to find out. Backpacking at supermarkets. Slots are hard to come by, but if you can get in with four to five friends and pack people's bags for three hours, then you can expect approximately £50 per person. Remember, it's never guaranteed, but go in in person well in advance and hopefully you'll be successful. Once you've decided what fundraising activities you're going to do, you need to set yourself two things. A target for each one and a deadline for each one. That way you know you're going to hit your minimum target by your final deadline. Thanks for listening guys and don't forget to stay in touch with your fundraising support as well. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, so, yeah, that, that video is a recipe for success. Um, it's basically about, you know, as I we was saying earlier, about breaking down your target and hopefully gave you a few ideas. Um, there's certainly a lot of different types of fundraising that we covered in that video, but I think it's really important to be aware that fundraising is really flexible. There are so many ways that you could fundraise that like we can never go through them all. Um, yeah, so definitely, you know, be creative, think about what would work for you. Mm. That's like a huge part of like the network mapping videos thinking about like yeah. things that will work for you and your friends and family will want to take part in and will want to donate for yeah and I guess also like yeah. any hobbies or like passions that you have or anything you've always wanted to try like you know if you can turn it into a fundraiser as well mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I had a volunteer speaking to you today who, um, she was on quite a tight time frame, which is um, one of the questions we just had, um, and because she was studying at university and had a lot of exams on, um, but she did a yoga class um, every week as, as she was part of the yoga society, so she convinced the teacher to um, put on an extra class every mm -hmm. week, and then they were happy for the money that people paid to attend that class to go towards her fundraising. So that's really, you know, that's yeah. really, really cool promote it as like a, a relaxation activity when you're doing exams and she managed to find a way to like fit her, her hobbies um like work her fundraising mm -hmm. into her hobbies and fit it around her like busy lifestyle exactly. yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. cool and um, we've got loads of questions and um, which is so brilliant uh we might not get time to answer them all but we will definitely try um okay any, any questions? Um, yeah, so, um, what should we do for? <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, this one um, is um, so from Augusta. Um, so, hi, ladies. My boyfriend is planning to dress like a woman, but very eccentric and funny, um, and have him and a couple of friends walk around town um i just wanted to know if this could be seen as an unethical or not in line with ics values um okay so i think personally um it could potentially be seen as possibly offensive um if, if you're going to be doing kind of in the public um i would definitely maybe ask that you reflect a bit on kind of the um you know your placement and kind of what you're going to be doing um as well um and just maybe trying to kind of move away from maybe more um kind of controversial things i'd say um, and move more towards like things that are kind of in line with um your placement what your agencies um uh kind of areas of work that they work in and trying more to kind of fit it around that personally mm. Yeah, I know. I do completely understand um, where you're coming from, but I think it's just important to remember that you are, as a volunteer out there fundraising, you are representing um, BS, um, sorry, ICS, um, and the charity um, that you're that you're going to be volunteering with. And a lot of the work that you know ICS does, for example, is often around like gender equality and trying mm -hmm. to. Um, like get past you know stereotypes of people so i think um yeah potentially that that wouldn't be the best challenge maybe yeah. to take on but challenges but there are other yeah. like there are other things that can be like 
funny, can be, you know, um, quite, yeah, a bit more out there um, in terms of like challenges. So, you know, um, I guess classic ones are things like, um, like, Shaving your head for um, hair for charity. Um, um, one guy yeah. um, just put up three different pictures of different hairstyles that he would get, yeah. um, and then the the one that got the most votes was the one that he went for. And you yeah. could vote by donating to his page and saying which vote he wanted. And he ended up with like a grander um, look with a bit like tough hair in the middle, and like that was really funny. Yeah. Um, but I think challenges are great. You know, doing funny or eccentric challenges are, you know, they're a really great way to get people involved and, and you know, doing dares and things that can be really Definitely. fun, but you do have to be really careful uh, not to cause offence mm -hmm. um, to anyone. So I would I would maybe, you know, like I said, maybe have a rethink about, about that challenge, but if you do want to do a challenge, I think it can be really nice to also raise awareness at the same time. Yeah. So maybe do like a... Um, a, a challenge that can tie into issues around like um, development or the themes that you might be working on in your projects. Um, yeah. For example, like some volunteers um, do the five pound food challenge. I don't know, um, you've seen it in, the, in that video, but basically you live off one pound a day for five days for all of your food and drink. Um, and it's supposed to represent, that pound's supposed to represent the, the global poverty line. Um, so that's a really nice one to talk yeah, about, uh, raise definitely. awareness and you know, really be thinking about the kind of issues that mm -hmm. the ICS like is really trying to tackle. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I would say though, like it's really great that like your um, your boyfriend and his friends are engaged in your fundraising. Yeah. That's really fantastic, and like um, yeah, definitely you know do do make use of that, and mm. um, yeah, that's really nice that they kind of engage with it as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, on that note, I was just thinking um, challenges. So there was another question. I think it's from Lindsay, um, and she said, "I work in a well-known international business. Is there any good way to get the various sites involved, as we have offices around the UK and the world?" I think that's brilliant, yeah. and I think challenges could be a really great way to engage them. And obviously, it sounds like you've got a good network there. So, um, completely um, love the fact that you're you're hoping to make good use of that. Um, what about like trying to get? someone from each office or and previously from each office to do the same challenge and then you could make it a real like social media thing you could have different um and each one of you could like film a video of you doing the challenge and you could make that into a big thing yeah. and that's like a real like a global yeah. challenge that you're all taking on in the name of ICS yeah. um, a new charity and I, I think that would be that really would be, fun yeah, really cool. Okay. And you know, um, it is fine to like delegate some of your fundraising. Mm -hmm. So, say for example, if someone in the other offices um, was happy to, um, you know, do a bake sale on your behalf in the office, um, then there are so many ways to use offices. You could do like movie screenings. You could get one of the meeting rooms and and put a big film on um, and sell popcorn and soft drinks. Yeah. There are so many good ways. Sweet steaks as well are a good thing to do. Like yeah. at work, and again, you can do that globally as well. So mm -hmm. um, obviously, yeah, you have like the um, Lindsay got like international offices. So. You know, maybe some of your offices are um, part of like the um, Euro 2016, like football cup. Um, that that might be a good thing to do at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, have a bit of a sweet state um, and get people to yeah, kind of pick different teams, and maybe you could even get like a prize for them, and um, yeah, get people to come kind of donate a couple of pounds um, to pick a, a name out of the hat. Yeah. That'd be a nice one to do. Yeah, exactly. Well. Just put you know, you can do it as many times like depending on the demand. There's mm -hmm. um, someone in our office at the moment is actually doing a Euro um, sweet state, and he's on his sixth. Round yeah. the country yeah. because lots of people get involved. He sold them for two pounds a country. I've got Czech Republic. Yeah, so. I've got the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to do very well. Right? So. <laughs> like, but, you know, and um, I think he's. If the prize doesn't have to be huge, like to be honest, a lot of people take part in these types of things for the yeah. fun of taking part. Um, so either you know, a bottle of wine or a box of exactly. chocolates, like people are still going to join in. So that could be quite a fun one um, to do. Or we could have like a competition, like see if you can break a Guinness World Record, like that. You know, those yeah. are really fun ways. And if you've got that network, like global network, that'd be great. Um, but all, obviously, all of these ideas you can do. In yeah. Anyway. Also, that's definitely like um, so. Obviously, one of one of the reasons we ask you to fundraise as well is to like raise awareness of ICS. And if you're doing that globally, then can't really ask so much more. Yeah, so that's great. That'd be amazing. 
Um, okay. Ah, okay. So Emma is saying, if we fundraise outside of just giving, do we send all funds to you through it? Um, also, how do we know if we've set up our account properly? Okay. Um, good questions always yeah. comes up. So um, thank you, Emma, for asking it. So basically, um, if you have any money raised, for example, in this week's big, mm -hmm. um, you've got um, lots of cash offline, the easiest thing is to put it into your bank account and then donate it onto your Just Giving page. And in the message section, you can do a note saying, um, thanks to everyone who donated um, you know, to a partner in sweepstake. sake. Um, really appreciate your support. That way we um, know where that money's come from. Um, so everyone's really clear about how you fundraised it um, and it does get sent straight to the charity. Um, yeah. But yeah, this other offline um, Yeah, checks. Um, so it does. It will depend a little bit on which agency um, you're with. So with checks, um, if you just need to put your name on the back of the check and send it into um, either the um, either the agency, so whoever your kind of um, coordinator is there, um, or send it into your fundraising support officer. So just maybe just double check with your FSO kind of what which one of those it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and the second part was how do we know if we set up our account properly? Um, I'm sure it is set up properly, but if you do have any worries or questions, then make sure you can um, email it to your fundraising support officer, ask them to check yeah. it for you, um, and they'll definitely be able to give you any help or, or guidance about just giving. Um, but definitely yeah. use just giving, like it's a really great tool. Um, there's, it has loads of features. Make sure you like upload videos or photos and like personalize mm -hmm. it as much as you can. Yeah. Put pictures up of like your challenges of like any events that you do, like um yeah, just do upload all the pictures of it. Yeah. Um yeah. and I guess yeah for anyone that hasn't set up their just giving page yet, there is a um, a guide um in the initial email you would have been sent about your fundraising. Um so yeah that's like number one priority to do like straight away yeah. as soon as you can um getting that up and, and shared. Mm, yeah, and I mean, it's just such an easy way to get the ball rolling and to get mm -hmm. people to hear about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And just giving quickly, and you can also set up a text code. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go edit my page, and there's a box in the right hand corner that just says just text giving, um, yeah, it, it take, it's really easy, it takes you through that. Um, then people can just text donate to your page, which is really handy, especially if you've got like a cake sale, people are always like, oh, I don't have change. You're like, that's fine, mm -hmm. you can just text donate. <laughs> Um, okay, so do, do, do. I've got quite a few from you, mm. that's brilliant. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, from Victoria, so um, who do we talk about? Um, who do we talk to about getting uh, tops and buckets? Um, so um, for t-shirts, we can send out t-shirts to you for your fundraising event. Um, it is only it's the same t-shirt that you take on placement, so obviously you need to take care of it. But um, basically, you just speak to your fundraising support officer, um, and they'll like point you in the right, the right direction. Either we can send it out, or again, it will be the agency who sends that out to you. Um, but you have to get in touch with um, with either us or, or your agency about that. Um, with the buckets, um, so um, all all of us, are, um, the FSOs can send out like some some resources, which you includes like um bucket labels and a few balloons and posters so if you need any of those get again get in touch with us um we can't provide buckets um, unfortunately um but um what i what i always say is just have a look on um either amazon or ebay you can get quite a few for like a really reasonable price so and um, it is quite easy or pop down to like the pound shop or something to, to get those yeah, um, and uh, so we can send out the um, branding, like the, the yeah. bucket stickers that you can exactly. put on those that will say like um, your agency's name and ICS um, and that has a registered charity number on those as well. Um, yeah, you do need to make sure that, you know, you, you have got the charity number and they go clearly mm -hmm. displayed um, on, on the buckets. Um, so yeah, we can get those out to you along with some um, ICS balloons and posters as well, yeah. Um, okay, so we have a question from Emma that says, what happens if you don't reach the target? Um, so that is another question that, uh, that often gets asked, especially at this stage. Um, 
I mentioned it earlier, but it is it is really normal to be worried at this stage um, about what happens if you don't reach your target because it can be quite a daunting time. Um, but don't worry, it's, it's so rare that people aren't able to hit their target. And when it does happen, it's usually um, because of a, there was another factor involved that prevented them from reaching that target, or B, they weren't committed to ICF um, and they didn't invest um, you know, the time and the energy that we expect of volunteers. Um, so in that situation, um, if you if you were if you weren't able to hit your target, which uh, you know, I can't emphasize how much like how rare it is and yeah. and like how you know if you stay positive and you're proactive you you i promise you'll reach it um, but if it does happen if it was because of the first reason i mentioned um that you um you had tried everything you've been really active you've been like um doing lots of activities been in regular contact with your fundraising support officer asking them for ideas telling them things didn't work out but then there was for whatever factor maybe something you know that, personal circumstances, maybe something happened or um, yeah, and you, you weren't able to, to quite get up to that target, but we thought that you had demonstrated um, all of the dimensions that volunteers are assessed by, um, We and we thought you're still demonstrating that commitment, um, then we would still send you overseas. So it's not as black and white as you don't hit your target, you immediately don't go. Um, but if we if you didn't hit your target and we thought it was because you know you are you are all volunteers have been continually assessed um throughout their placement um and it, you know we would have to reevaluate that assessment and see if you you know if you were weren't hitting your target because for example you weren't demonstrating your positive and realistic commitment and um, then we would not send you on your placement um so yeah, and yeah. Um, I guess the only thing I'd add to that is just again stressing the importance of staying in touch with us. Um, you know, if things aren't going to plan, um, then you know normally it's something that can be solved. Um, but so definitely get in touch with us. Like if you've organised an event and you know it hasn't gone to plan, then you know give us a call, drop us an email, let us know that, and you know tell us why you thought it was, and you know. In those cases, like we can always think of like different, you know, another new way, a different way to kind of get you to target. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I guess as well, like if it is the case that you know you come towards the end of your fundraising and you know you haven't managed to reach your target, um, but you haven't stayed in touch with us, then you know we we don't know why that is. Um, so yeah, just again, just stressing important to stay in touch. Um, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um. Okay. Is there any other questions? I think we may have answered all the ones that have come in. Yeah. If any other, if you have any other questions, um, please do send them quickly now. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, I would just say, um, yeah, don't don't worry. Honestly, like you. Will all be brilliant, and like you know, but going back to that, we've you know we've um so we've supported loads and loads of volunteers, um and whatever situation you're in, we will have heard it before, and like I said, we will be able to help you to get up to your target. Um, mm -hmm. so definitely make make the most of us, and you um uh, you know we are all working with lots of volunteers, and if we don't hear from you, we'll presume that things are going well. Um, so definitely don't wait for us to get in touch, like be proactive, like send us an email or give us a phone call and say, you know, I, I need some help with this, not too sure what yeah. I'm doing, that we will be more than happy to hear from you and um, we want to help. Um, so just make us aware that you, you do want that support. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, cool. Um, um, okay, yeah, well, it was due to be 45 minutes, <laughs> uh, so very Please. prompt, um, and thank you all so much for being so engaged, you've asked loads of brilliant, like really interesting really questions, um, and I can tell from the amount that people have picked on them, they wanted to hear them too, yeah, um, so yeah, thank you all very much for that, yeah. and good luck with your fundraising, yeah, I hope, yeah, we will definitely, um, yeah, be, be in touch soon, yeah. and, all right, I hope you all have a lovely Tuesday evening. <laughs> Thanks, bye. bye.